Welcome to Wager Wars, where me and the other Babs go head to head with our best NFL picks each week. This past week, I went two and one, returning $494, giving me a profit of $80 on the season. Last week, I went with the Bucks minus five and a half, be a Baker believer, and I also went with the Ravens money line. They are a team that will make the Super Bowl, mark my words. I am Rob, and I went one and two with my picks last week, which dropped me down to $295 of profit on the season. Rob has a $214 lead in the standings. Here are my best three bets for the weekend. My first bet for Wager Wars this week is going to be George Kittle as an anytime touchdown scorer. You can find that at plus 190 on FanDuel. The reason why you need to take George Kittle is because Brock Purdy has so many shiny toys in the toy chest, he has yet to use George Kittle, and that is probably the coolest toy in the toy chest, if I'm being honest. A $100 bet will return you $290. My second bet for Wager Wars this week is going to be my New Orleans Saints money line coming in at plus 110 on FanDuel. Let me tell you right now, there's no better time to play in Green Bay, Wisconsin than the end of September. If this game was in December, I might take the other side. A $100 bet on this will return you $210. And my third and final bet for Wager Wars this week is going to be the Buccaneers money line. That's coming in at plus 190 on FanDuel. I am a Bucks believer. I said it in the intro. Everybody needs to believe the Baker hype. If he starts out 3-0, it'll be the first time in his career that this has happened. He has the best tools around him. And in a, in a weird sense, is Mike Evans alive again? He's a part of that team, ladies and gentlemen, and he is on pace to break the record for most 1,000-yard consecutive receiving seasons. All right, my first bet for Wager Wars is going to be the San Francisco 49ers minus 6.5 on the first half spread against the New York Giants, a minus 111 bet here. So a $100 bet will pay me 190 This is a great Thursday night football bet. We went to Patano for this one, and on Thursday night football, I don't have a lot of faith in the New York Giants, although I did in the preseason, and actually even in the offseason as well. I put a lot of futures bets on them, and I lined up the division in with, well, probably too many bets. So now I'm going to be betting against them because I have no faith in this team to be able to get anything done. They seem completely broken. They haven't been able to score a lot of points. So I'm going to lean on the 49ers to be able to put a few touchdowns, maybe a couple field goals in there, and be able to get, well, at least six and a half points of a lead. Maybe I could have gone higher on that. My second pick for Rager Wars is going to be the Raiders first quarter money line. That's at minus 110. A $100 bet here pays 190 as well. And that's at bat 365. And honestly, the Pittsburgh Steelers have some offensive play calling problems and they haven't been able to get things going early. Now, they've been able to get things done late. But the Raiders also had some trouble, but I'm suspecting in this game that we're going to see a good start from the Raiders, and they're going to be able to pull off, well, a clean first quarter. If Pittsburgh can't really get it done well in this game, Matt Canada might be out of the play calling spot this early. That's how bad things have been. And my third bet, and a rare one for me, I'm going Titans money line at minus 145. A $100 bet here pays 245 at bet 365, and this is one of the few positive EV money lines. And honestly, these odds, it's a little bit of a risk but I'm thinking that they're going to be able to get it done. If you know me, I also hate the Cleveland Browns, so this one might be a little bit biased, but I needed to add something with a bit of a higher odd in here to be able to make my, well, profit put me in a position where George can't completely take me over. So this one puts me in a position where even if I lose a bet, it still puts me in a good spot. A little strategy on this one, but it is a positive EV play, so it's still a good bet. George, I got to be honest with you, leaning into the bucks like that, plus 190 is a great number, but I don't think they have a chance to get it done against the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, the reason why I think that they do have a chance, Rob, is because Baker Mayfield has a bit of magic. He's a player's player. And what I mean by that is there is no guy in the locker room that brings his comrades together better than Baker. And I know that sounds like an alliteration. You could do better Baker, best Baker. We, he's a better baker because he bets on himself. That hasn't come out yet, but I'm sure he does because that's what a player's player does. And what, do you are you believing the Eagles hype? Or are you are you thinking they can go back to their Super Bowl ways? Honestly, I bet against the Eagles for futures. I was big on the Giants too. I bet against Dallas. I was a you know kind of anticipating a big giant season. They're not going to have a giant season at all. It's it's bad news bears over there. Uh, but Philadelphia still is a bit better of a team than I anticipated with all the coordinators basically leaving and them having to put fresh guys in there. It has somehow worked. I don't think they're getting enough credit for the fact that 
offensively and defensively and even on special teams, things have kind of functioned properly. Um, and with all those coaching changes, you kind of thought maybe that wouldn't work, but they did a good job at it. Now, Baker Mayfield, I love that guy. That Thursday night football game when he came into the Rams with 48 hours notice was one of the greatest football accomplishments of all time. It was amazing. However, um, these two teams matched up. I think Philadelphia edges them out. I would probably, if I had to be a, you know, a betting man once again, maybe Philly by seven, but maybe Baker tries to make it close at the end, but I can't see them getting over the hump against Philly. I think the, the main thing for me there, you're going to see the speed between the two linebackers, Levante David and Devin White for the Buccaneers. I think that they are the most prepared team, them and the Ravens, to stopping that high-powered RPO offense. I'm... I would say I'm confidence level seven out of ten on this one. I know it's our best bet show, but I am I'm understanding I'm a Baker believer in this. I understand that I am I'm grasping for the stars. All right. But what about you? You took the Raiders first quarter money line, first home game, versus what I think is one of the toughest defenses in the league, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, honestly, it might be a field goal difference in this one, but uh, it was more so I don't expect Pittsburgh be able to be able to score. As I said before, Matt Canada has struggled with um, operating this offense, and the fans have pretty much said they're done with the guy. Um, so it's probably going to be a field goal difference. Maybe even, you know, we get crazy. Maybe it's a safety. Maybe they win by two, but it's just the money line. It's a true number. It's a true start at home. I anticipate things getting done for the Raiders, but what's more important we got to talk about is the fact that Brock Purdy doesn't even have to throw touchdown passes. Yeah, no, there's no need to do it, except for this weekend when he's going to throw in a George Kittle and then cash my bet. So that's when I need Brock Purdy to show off that shiny new elbow. I hope he, uh, you know, is is putting it on full display this weekend um, because George Kittle uh, and all the tight ends in the league, let's not forget that this was one of the most hated position groups until they started doing tight end university. There's an NFL tight end day. And then before you know it, Okay, tight ends are getting paid more money than they've ever seen before in their entire lives. Darren Waller. So you got to keep George Kittle happy, although he likes to block. And to prove your point, he's been blocking, pancaking people for all their touchdowns. But you got to keep the dude happy. Him and I'm not even going to lie, Rob, I thought about Kyle Juszczyk. I really did think about Kyle Juszczyk as anytime touchdown score. I think that one was at plus 250 when I checked it. What do you think about these doubleheader Monday night football games? They are a waste of a half of football. Listen, if I am a football loving fan, I want to be able to watch both games fully. So if you're going to play two Monday night games, I don't have an issue with it when you start the East Coast one at 430 and then you start the West Coast one at eight o'clock or, you know, 815. If you allot the proper amount of time for a full game to play and then we can watch another game, you're making every football fan extremely happy. This past week was a disservice in my opinion. They should have just pushed these games around and done something a little bit different. I'm not a big fan. How long, Rob, until they either add Tuesday night or Friday night to this slate? I do feel like this is coming soon in the future. Um, I'm wondering maybe if we do see the consistent Saturday and they do throw something up against college football, and college football adjusts to push more of their games into the earlier slates. Well, that wraps it up this week for Wager Wars. Make sure that you keep up to date with Wager Wars. Subscribe to the Gridiron Junkies channel. Hit that notification bell because the tides can turn this week in my favor.